Hey folks, welcome to Tech News Day. This week's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN and by Captera. Ricky is currently up in the bayous of Washington, D.C., sipping on mint juleps with his new wife, so it's just you and me today. And wow, have I got some zany news for you. The world's dying. Well, not us. We're doing pretty great for now. And in fact, human population has doubled from 3.5 billion to over 7 billion in just the last 50 years. Wow. But turns out that's kind of the problem for uh, everything else that's alive on this planet. And if all those other species keep dying, that's eventually going to be really bad news for us. This week, the United Nations Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, or the IPBES, they released a new report compiled over the last three years by hundreds of scientists from dozens of countries, and the main takeaway from it is that humans are treating our planet very poorly, and we really gotta cut that shit out soon, or we're gonna be in big trouble. And if that's given you a bit of deja vu, well, it's probably because you've been paying attention, but it's also probably because this new report comes just six months after the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, released their big terrifying report on the world's outlook if drastic action isn't taken with regards to global temperatures rising. Now, climate change is one aspect of this new report, but what it's mainly about is all the other various ways that humanity is fucking this planet up. The ways that we use land, the way that we harvest resources, the ways that we pollute, and so on. All of which, in my opinion at least, is a bit easier to wrap your head around than the whole, well, if the world's average temperature goes up by one degree Celsius, it'll trigger the apocalypse. I mean, that's definitely happening too, but uh, it's a lot harder for the people in charge to say, well, that just doesn't make any sense. If we're talking about how, for example, if you, if you go to a place that has a lot of fish and then you catch all the fish, uh, there's not gonna be any more fish there. That's pretty simple, you'd think. But anyway, let's just run down some of the horrifying bullet points of what this report says. Of the world's roughly 8 million plant and animal species, around 1 million plant and animal species are at risk of extinction. The general rates of extinction are currently tens to hundreds of times higher than they have been for the last 10 million years. Compared to prehistoric times, natural ecosystems have lost about half their area, abundance of native plant and animal life has dropped by 20%, and the biomass of wild animals has fallen by 82%. Now, those last few things have, of course, happened over a very long period of time. And that period of time also happens to be exactly when human civilizations became a thing, leading to today. And human population has grown exponentially, especially in the last few hundred years. We've been pumping CO2 into the air and gradually raising global temperatures since around 1800. But for way longer than that, we've been farming, logging, hunting, mining, fishing, building cities and roads, and also just dumping all of our waste in the nearest body of water. When there was just, I don't know, one billion of us around 200 years ago, it wasn't good to do those things. But now that there's seven billion of us, all this normal human stuff is just killing everything else alive on this planet faster than any of these plants and animals can recover. And that's compounded by global warming because unlike us with our clothes and our shelter and our easy access to food and water, uh, everything else that's alive on this planet evolved over millions of years to survive in very specific conditions. And those conditions are in not great shape right now. Uh, what else? Oh, turns out the amount of plastic waste that we're polluting our oceans with has increased tenfold since just 1980. Since pre-industrial times, aka around 200 years ago, humans have altered 75% of all land and 66% of all marine environments to go and do human stuff with it, and 85% of the world's wetlands have just pff, disappeared since the 18th century. Currently, one-third of marine stocks, aka fisheries, aka where we get the fish that we eat, are being fished at unsustainable levels, meaning they're going to run out of fish eventually. Currently, more than 40% of amphibian species, almost a third of reef-forming corals, sharks and shark relatives, and over a third of marine mammals are currently threatened with extinction if nothing happens. More than half a million species of land animals do not have enough natural habitat left to ensure their long-term survival. And, uh, oh, remember how we talked about Australia and the cane toads and the cats a few weeks back on Weekly Weird News? Well, invasive species worldwide have risen by 70% since just 1970. And the report says, quote, the rate of introduction of new invasive alien species seems higher than ever before and with no signs of slowing. We did it. Now, specifically with regards to farming, the reason it's so bad is it often involves taking a big, ecologically diverse piece of land 
and then just killing everything that lives there so you can grow one thing, which is not only bad for the soil, but also makes the farmland very vulnerable to disease and drought. Uh-oh. But aside from farming crops, livestock farming is, surprise, surprise, very fucking inefficient. We don't get much out of it compared to the damage and waste that it creates. Here's a fun little graph that The Guardian made about that. Uh, livestock farming for meat and dairy uses 83% of farmland, creates 58% of agricultural greenhouse gas emissions, creates 57% of water pollution, creates 56% of air pollution, and uses 33% of fresh water, all while only providing 35% of our protein and 18% of our calories. Seems like kind of a shitty deal. And I, I enjoy eating meat. So might you. But it's shit like this that should make all of us carnivores step back and think, uh, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't eat nearly, <laughs> nearly as much of that meat. And I can already hear the vegans typing down there, and look, you're right. You're right. I'll admit it. But anyways, what are we supposed to take away from this latest report about how fucked up everything is, aside from, yeah, we're fucked. Well, one of the report's authors, Andy Purvis of London's Natural History Museum, told The Guardian this. This is the most thorough, most detailed, and most extensive planetary health check. The take-home message is that we should have gone to the doctor sooner. We are in a bad way. The society we would like our children and grandchildren to live in is in real jeopardy. I cannot overstate it. If we leave it to later generations to clear up the mess, I don't think they will forgive us. Another one of the report's authors, coral reef expert David Obura, told The Guardian, We tried to document how far in trouble we are to focus people's minds, but also to say it is not too late if we put a huge amount into transformational behavioral change. This is fundamental to humanity. We are not just talking about nice species out there. This is our life support system. So yeah, the takeaway here is it's not too late. It's close, but there's still time to at least try and fix this by doing things like developing and incentivizing more efficient farming techniques that provide food while supporting existing species that already live there, establishing effective fishing quotas, wasting less food, being more efficient with natural resources, and creating and enforcing stronger environmental laws. That's right, regulation. Sadly though, actually fully turning the ship around at this point is kind of off the table. It sounds like the most we can really hope for here is damage control that'll slow down the decline in biodiversity, but not fully stop it because a lot of the damage is already done. So yeah, best case scenario, things get shittier slower. That's fun to think about. But you know, drastically reducing extinction, is a, it's a better option than just letting things continue as they are. And uh, as has been demonstrated time and time again, when governments do actively try to stop extinction of threatened species, it often works. They just have to actually try. Step one though is admitting you have a problem. And our government here, not too keen on that lately. In fact, on the same day that the UN report was released this week, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo spoke about how sea ice melting around the Arctic actually opens up lots of fun new economic opportunities because our ships no longer have to go around the big old ice if it's turned into water. You can just go right through it. And he's not wrong, technically. I mean, ships can now get through that pesky Arctic a whole lot quicker now that a bunch of it's not ice anymore. Yay. So, I, I mean, I guess, I guess we should just be happy that global trade is slightly more efficient. And don't bother thinking about what happens further down the line when more and more of that ice melts. For now, the ships get to go quicker. And look, there's of course already plenty of folks, none of whom are experts in any of these fields, pointing out stuff like the sample sizes in this report, they're too small. How can these scientists say that all the fish are dying if they haven't personally counted every single fish by hand? Checkmate. And I guess that's a fair point. I mean, as long as you're willing to also dismiss all statistical data ever. Or, I don't know, you could just trust in the expertise of the hundreds of people who wrote this report who very much know what they're talking about. And uh, maybe don't be a little contrarian shithead. How about that? How about you sit down, you shut the fuck up, and you listen. Speaking of shutting the fuck up and listening, it's time for a word from this week's sponsors, starting with ExpressVPN. You might be one of those people that thinks cybercrime is something that only happens to other people. You're probably not, though, because you, you watch this show and you know better. You know that every time you connect to a public Wi-Fi network, you are exposing your data to hackers and crooks. Don't be a victim. Take action. Get ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. 
ExpressVPN has easy-to-use apps that run seamlessly in the background of your computer, phone, and tablet. Turning on ExpressVPN protection only takes one click, and then you're safely using public Wi-Fi without being snooped on or having your personal data stolen, all for less than $7 a month. ExpressVPN is rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash newsday. That's expressvpn.com slash newsday for three months free with a one-year package. expressvpn.com slash newsday to learn more. And this episode is sponsored by Captera. We've all read some surprising online reviews, right? Whether you're trying to get a sweet deal on something that you've been saving for or trying to find the best happy hour in town, it's generally a good idea to read the reviews first. So why should finding the right software for your business be any different? Read thousands of real software reviews and find the right software for your business at capterra.com newsday. Capterra is the leading free online resource to help you find the best software solution for your business. With over 850,000 reviews of products from real software users, discover everything you need to make an informed decision. Search more than 700 specific categories of software, everything from project management to email marketing to yoga studio management software. No matter what kind of software your business needs, Capterra makes it easy to discover the right solution and quick. Join the millions of people who use Capterra each month to find the right tools for their business. Visit capterra.com slash newsday for free today to find the tools to make an informed software decision for your business. capterra.com slash newsday. C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A. Capterra. Software selection simplified. All right, now back to some news that's a little less terrifying than the apocalypse. Remember Tumblr? Tumblr had a bit of a, an apocalypse of its own when Verizon bought Tumblr's parent company, Yahoo, and then proceeded to make a few changes to Tumblr. Specifically, back in November, they basically banned all content deemed not safe for work. Uh, initially, this was pitched as, hey guys, we're just trying to get rid of all the illegal stuff like the child porn. And to be fair, it turned out there was uh, an alarming amount of that on there. Okay, get rid of it, yeah. But within a month, Tumblr, they just went ahead and banned all adult content from the site and their user base quickly started dwindling, thanks also to the fact that tons of completely innocent, non-pornographic content was getting falsely flagged and removed. Well, now, after essentially destroying Tumblr, Verizon's next step is getting rid of it. At least according to the Wall Street Journal. They want to sell it, and uh, they may already have a potential buyer in the form of none other than Pornhub. Pornhub Vice President Corey Price confirmed this in an email to BuzzFeed News in which he wrote, Tumblr was a safe haven for those who wanted to explore and express their sexuality, adult entertainment aficionados included. We've long been dismayed that such measures were taken to eradicate erotic communities on the platform, leaving many individuals without an asylum through which they could comfortably peruse adult content. There are obvious synergies between the two brands and value Pornhub could derive from Tumblr. We're extremely interested in acquiring the platform and are very much looking forward to one day restoring it to its former glory with NSFW content. So yeah, that's good news for all you little perverts who felt, you know, exiled from Tumblr for these past few months. And it's yet another glimpse at something Ricky and I have been predicting and cheering on for a while now. Pornhub going legit. They've got the technology, they've got the know-how, they've got the moxie, but thus far, they've only ever used it for porn. The biggest hurdle, though, for this or for a Pornhub-owned YouTube clone would be the advertising, because even without the Pornhub Association, Tumblr was having a hell of a time attracting enough advertisers to remain profitable, largely thanks to the fact that there was a ton of porn on Tumblr. So that's not going to get any better for anyone. Another thing to consider is that uh, Pornhub's parent company, MindGeek, uh, at this point, they have virtually a monopoly on the entire online porn industry. They own several major porn studios, as well as multiple porn websites like YouPorn, Xtube, RedTube, so buying up Tumblr would be one more way for them to monopolize this kind of content. And a lot of adult performers, you know, the people that make the porn, they've said that this monopoly isn't always so great for them and their livelihoods. So that's just something to think about before you declare this potential Tumblr resurrection as a big win in the fight against giant media conglomerates. Because Pornhub is kind of a giant media conglomerate. Anyway, speaking of stuff that's not safe for work, remember back in January when we told you about how the CES convention gave a robotics innovation award to a female sex toy, but then just before the convention, they 
took it away. They revoked the award, citing the part of their rule book which says, entries deemed by CTA in their sole discretion to be immoral, obscene, indecent, profane, or not in keeping with CTA's image will be disqualified. It was pretty messed up. Arguably sexist. It was not a good thing to do, especially considering that the sex toy, the Osei, was widely seen as one of the most scientifically advanced sex toys ever created. A true robotics innovation. Well, now, months later, the Consumer Technology Association has once again changed their minds about the Osei, this time re-awarding it after previously awarding it and then de-awarding it. The CTA didn't explain why the hell it took so long, but they did say this. CTA did not handle this award properly. This prompted some important conversations internally and with external advisors, and we look forward to taking these learnings to continue to improve the show. So yeah, it, it's, it's nice to get a happy ending on this show every once in a while, even if it is several months late. We don't win very much here. It's a lot of bad news all the time, it's a lot of depressing things, and sometimes when a vibrator wins an award, it feels good. Anyway, quick show this week, obviously, one half of the hosts, one half the time. I'm planning on having some co-hosts for Weekly Weird News and News Dump this week, so stay tuned for both of those. And uh, if you haven't seen our two latest videos, they're right over there. Just click them. And if you want to be a big old benefactor, a real patron of the arts, and support this show financially, please consider visiting our Patreon or joining here on YouTube as a member. There's a button down there somewhere. I'll see you all very soon. Assuming the world's still here. Bye-bye.